of Doug D. Bell Bailey. Tell y'all a little bit about how I got started with the business. Just invite you a little bit into my world, man. It hasn't been an easy journey, but it's been a fun one thus far. All right, so I remember being 18, living in Plainfield, New Jersey, going to high school and getting the opportunity to do a commercial at the Burger King that I actually worked at. And that was like my beginning intro into the, into the entertainment world. I was flipping burgers and making fries and I found out that uh, there was some people from uh, the Burger King that were gonna shoot a, a, a nationwide commercial. It was right there on South Ave in Plainfield, New Jersey. I went to work, it was a regular day. I seen all these crews and stuff setting up outside and I was just like, yo, I wanna be a part of this. My manager at the time was telling me just go in the back and just flip burgers, but I knew that I had a bigger destiny that day. There was a lady by the name of Big Les that was on BET's Rap City, and she had a little trailer set up, and I just went, I just started knocking on the door, knocking on the door. She let me in, and I was mad excited, mad eager, 18, you know, just trying to make my little uh, mark as I could. Basically, she gave me an opportunity. She liked my energy, and uh, she talked to the director, and next thing you know, um, I, I had my first little scene as an extra in a Burger King commercial. So from there, I just kept on building, kept on grinding. But the entertainment industry was just something that I really chased hard for. So when I first had arrived at college, I was told that I wasn't going to be able to um, take any internships until I was in my junior year. But I just felt like I needed to get started a little bit earlier. And so I just looked through the phone book and I started making phone calls. So then. By uh, my first semester, I got an internship with Electra Records, and that kind of jump-started me off. And from there, I did internships with, uh, with MTV and So.com as well. That was uh, a prime time situation. They had a show called Where You At, and it was on Comcast. Mike Sisti was a producer of the show named Where You At. He had me come down like for an interview just to meet him. Q and Malika were like the first guests. I'm thinking I'm just coming in just to talk with my man and you know see what the possibilities is. He put me on the spot and I had to do my first interview with Q and Malika. And from there, it was a go. He liked what I did. I really didn't have no prep time, but I still went in there and I did my thing. Through the Comcast situation, I was just growing as a host, just learning how to interview people, learning how to network within the industry, and it was it was a really good look. But then in the midst of the Comcast thing, I was still in school and I was just about to finish up. My last semester, I had an opportunity to go to the Just Those Mixtape Awards, which was being held at BB King. This was 2005. Just O Faison was the founder of the Mixtape Awards. This was the last uh, Mixtape Awards that he was present for. And I really didn't know what to expect. I just went into the situation, just ready to do my interviews as normal. And Mike had told me pretty much they would set me up um, in a certain area and I would interview the artists as they was coming off stage, you know, receiving their awards. I had no idea that I was gonna be interviewing for about three and a half hours straight, which is pretty much what happened. I mean, I interviewed so many different artists, but in the midst of that three and a half hours, I didn't take no bathroom breaks. I was pretty knowledgeable about all the artists, the DJs, producers that I was interviewing. At the end of the Mixtape Awards um, 2005, I met a lady by the name of Keisha Scott from Music Choice. And she gave me a card and she said, yo, you did your thing, you know, just keep in touch. And, um, you know, if there's any future possibilities with the network, you know, I'll keep you posted. It was definitely the highlight of my career at that point, you know, being the Just Those, being a part of, of history. You know, um, and Justo passed away maybe a couple months later, so I was I was a little devastated. But um, Bobby Yan, who was working with Justo at the time, you know, really gave me the opportunity to get my feet wet, and I, I definitely had appreciated that. I never forgot about um, that chance that I got with the mixtape awards. That pretty much sent it off. Maybe about three months later, I graduated school. I decided at the request of my advisor to look into some other opportunities that had presented themselves. And that opportunity was Disney World. I went down to Orlando for an internship. I thought it was a pretty good move for me for personal reasons at the time, as well as professionally. I mean, coming out of school for media, as far as entertainment, Disney is the number one company. Like, it's the best place to be. So it was definitely me stepping outside of the box and doing something different. So I went down to Orlando, learning about Disney, going to Disney University, working as a vacation planner. Uh, that lasted for about three, three, four months, and 
towards the end of August, I decided to come back home. Not that Disney wasn't working out, it just, I really felt like I needed to be back in New York, New Jersey area to really, you know, take my career to the next level. But when I came back, I had finished school and everything was all good, but I, I couldn't find a job. You know, things was, was kind of rough. I was, I was doing telemarketing and I wasn't really happy. The Comcast show had ended since I had left and opportunities just seemed like they kind of had dried up for me. So I remember going to a BET audition um, a couple months after I came home and I really wanted the opportunity to do this thing, but it was one of those open auditions. They were looking for new hosts, 106 in Park, and the line was like so ridiculous. I think I was in line for almost, almost 10 hours. And when you get up to the audition, you go in front of the, the judge or the person that rates you and they gave you like less than a minute to convince them that you were, that you had what it took to become the next host of 106 in Parks. So the needless to say that didn't really work out too well. So I was, I was really discouraged. I really didn't know what direction to turn into in terms of where to go with my career. I had this degree, I had a little bit of experience, but I still needed to get more under my belt. So I, I stayed in touch with Keisha from Music Choice and it had been about a year since the Just Those thing had went down. She uh, emailed me and let me know that Music Choice was ready to put out some original programming and that they were gonna have auditions. So, of course, I mean, it was a glimmer of light. I was really excited. And I went out to New York, 34th Street, 8th Ave, uh, to go to Music Choice to see, you know, what, what possibilities were in front of me. So I met the producer, uh, Erica. I remember the audition being something that was totally different from what I had actually done at that point. It wasn't really about interviews, the celebrities. It was mainly about my personality and how I was able to react around the crowd. So I remember they took me to like this little college around the corner and they asked me to just build the crowd. Like, let's see, you know, your crowd control skills. And if you can get people around you, that's definitely a good sign. So that's what I did. I went over there, I just kind of announced myself, had the cameras on me. It ended up with the producer asking people, you know, would you watch this dude on TV? And the overwhelming majority said yes. I mean, I just brought as much energy and enthusiasm and personality as I could. You know, with television, you really don't know exactly what they're looking for. And I remember the end of the audition, I was asking Erica, I said, how did I do, how did I do? And she said, eh, you know, you did all right. And that was pretty much it. So I went home not really knowing was I gonna make it, was I not gonna make it, so I continued doing the telemarketing thing. Like I didn't have any management, I didn't have an agent. I really didn't know how the business worked. I was just blessed to have some opportunities. So I was anxious. I was really ready for things to take off for me. Um, I got a phone call one night right before I was about to go in and do my evening shift. I remember Erica saying something to the, to the point where it was like, unfortunately, that's all I had heard. So I kind of put the phone down, I was upset. I was like, man, you know, I really tried. And what she was trying to tell me was that they had actually chosen me to be uh, the co-host for their new show, which is called Certified. And I was really excited. And I found out the host of the show was um, Brie, who had just finished the season on America's Next Top Model. She rated really high. She was a big fan favorite. I think I went to Music Choice within the next couple of days. I got a contract, brought it home, looked it over, signed it. I had stepped into the realm of professional hosting. So when the show started, basically it was a show that faced off two celebrities, um, for instance, Lil Wayne versus T.I. And they had like uh, people on the streets vote on them, people could call in and vote, or people could go online and vote. And it was like a groundbreaking type of show because it was interactive. It was for the fans. Every every show that we shot, we went out to different locations in New York. It was just amazing for me to actually see my dream coming true so I can call myself officially a professional host. And the show went on for the first six, seven months. Everything was going good. The ratings was good. And then I got a phone call that, um, you know, Certified had won a Billboard Demix Award. We had over two million viewers. They had did a music choice moment at the office, which is something really rare that happens within the company when something really big happens. So I was excited, elated, anything that you could think of, man. I just felt like things were really moving up. Even though I didn't really know how to take it all in at the time, I knew that I was doing something that was that was tremendous. And then I think it was like a month after we had won the Billboard Demix Award, um, the show had got placed on hiatus. You know, they called us in and you know they sat me and Bree down and they basically was like the show was getting put on hiatus unfortunately that's how the business goes you win you up here 
and then you kind of come back down to earth. But being on national TV didn't really change my lifestyle at all. You know, I still was in the same places, still had the same friends. After Music Choice, um, I got a phone call from my homegirl, Risha. She was working at BLS at the time, and she said uh, she thought it would be a good opportunity for me to possibly gain some employment with BLS due to my personality, my ability to work with people. I went in, did the interview. I started working for BLS while my show was kind of phasing out. That was my new thing that I was doing, working in the promotions department. Got a chance to be around thousands of people, thousands of different events. Working for WBLS is definitely an experience that I take to heart. You know, the first African-American home station in New York City. So it was definitely a big deal for me to be a part of that type of legacy. And radio, honestly, was my first love. So um, working in the promotions department, I get a chance to really get a feel to, of the people and within the community. So I've been there for the past five years, trying to work my way up. You know, my, my ultimate goal is to become an on-air personality. These are the type of experiences that are gonna take me to that level. In addition to working for WBLS, um, I started getting into acting, which is like my new thing now. And I had a chance to work with some very talented people. And we put together a, a short film called Angela's Glory. Shina Little John, she was the director. She really gave me my, my first start to step out into the acting world. So that's something new that I'm doing. Acting is, is such a beautiful thing. God willing, you know, I'll be able to take my career into the next level with that. But in addition to always working in entertainment on the side, I've always worked in education, starting way back, joining AmeriCorps early in my life, you know, working at the, the Jersey Explorers Children's Museum, which is right across the street from the Whitney Houston uh, Elementary School. That was a great opportunity for me. And then going back to NJCU and becoming a media arts teacher, working for the pre-college program. I get a chance to interact with young people that are thinking about having media as a career. So we study film, we study video, we study music, and we study the radio business um, extensively. And with all my experiences, I'm able to give the kids some, um, some real life teachings on what the industry is all about. I just gotta continue to work hard. It's all about the kids, it's all about the community, and, and that's really, the most important stuff that I've done thus far on my journey. In this business, you know, it's, it's good to be attached to big brands, but you have to learn how to go the independent route. So newly, I formed Russell TV, which is an extension of everything that I've been doing thus far. I'm continuing to interview the celebrities, but in addition to that, I'm spotlighting some independent people, whether they be artists, whether they be business owners, models, um, even doctors, lawyers, and that's what Russell TV is all about. When the grind meets the hustle, it creates the Russell. So that's my new platform that I've been working with. And I'm also back working with the Justos as the host of Mix Show 360, which is a subdivision of the Justos. And that's going to have exclusive content on all the different events that we have coming up. And in addition to the interview on all the top new entertainers and sports figures that are in our world. And the D-Bell Fives, which is uh, another extension of what I've been doing in terms of the interviews. Um, it's a more mature look and a more mature platform for me to kind of get my newscast on and, and take it to, to Ed Bradley levels. Ed Bradley was one of our premier journalists and, and, and that's the kind of light I want to see myself in in the near future.